What the Potters don't know is that they've just moved into the building that is the enchanted gateway to the ancient world of Troll. Shut that damn door! It all comes from storytelling, it all comes from the screenplay. You know, when you write something, you have a fairly vivid concept of what it is that, that you're doing. And, you know, whether I write it or somebody else writes it, by the time it goes on the paper, it's pretty well translated, or at least when I read it, I translate it. And very often I, I kind of act like a police sketch artist. And is this the monster you saw? And I, I, you, you, you look at the, the creature and the context of its environment and what it has to do, so you kind of work backwards and re-engineer what it should look like. And that determines the overall construct. Um, is it bipedal? Does it breathe? Does it have stereoscopic vision? Does it have ears? Is it very cute here. Is, is it a werewolf? You know, is it a vampire? Uh, is it a little creature from hell? And what is their function in the movie? What do they do? And you know, it's it's almost like an actor who gets a script and you research the role and try to figure out. Okay, uh, the backstory would be this, and you sort of evolve it from that. And you know, I I, I do sketches, and then once the sketches are, are said, yeah, that's it. Then you go to to clay, you sculpt it three dimensionally, and then once that's approved, you go to the mold making process, and then you know the the aspect of creating a, a mechanical understructure to make it move around. Again, that, that is determined early on in the script, you know what it has to do, so you build specific mechanisms and allow it to do that. And, you know, this, this process, you know, for me, filmmaking is a fairly organic process. Whether I write it and direct it, or somebody else writes it or directs it, it it's all part of the storytelling process, so you try to make remain true to the written word. That doesn't mean that you can't bring ideas to the table. Let's say you read a script and it doesn't make any sense at all. Then you start suggesting and and you know bringing in sketches of ideas that you have. So sometimes you're allowed to uh, expand the concept into something that works within the context of what you read. So it's, it's all a matter of interpretation. What's your favorite aspect of making like, that creature come to life? Is there a moment that you enjoy like the sculpting or like, I don't know, sort of the, the I, I think, I, I mean, the, the, the way I, I, I do it is the, the process is as important as, as the final. And, and uh, ultimately, the final creature is, is the proof of the point. So, I'm, I'm, I'm very often involved with prep, prep organizing, and designing, and creating the look. I'm involved with the shoot, making sure it's lit properly, making sure it moves. Half the time I direct it. Uh, I'm, I'm involved with the, the editing process to make sure the right cuts are used. I'm involved with uh, the post-production process of putting the right sounds, you know, making it alive and organic and real. So when you make creature effects the way I make creature effects, the next likely direction to move into is actually making the movie yourself because you've gone through every single uh, aspect of, of prep, principal photography and post and final delivery. So. Logical transition is to make movies. Yeah, has there been a moment that you like? What is there any movies that you've made yourself that you you enjoy all of them, or is it one of the that stands out to you that it's kind of like? Uh, I, I'm pretty fickle. I I, I kind of love every movie I'm working on at the moment. Yeah, uh, it, it all really depends. I, I think there there are certain movies that that I've made that have captured the imagination of the public and. You know, they've, they've become fan fan favorites. I think mean, Troll is certainly a fan favorite. My Friday the Thirteenth movie, people seem to respond very positively to. And, and there's a vast amount of people who 
are contacting me saying they love the stuff we did on uh, Tarzan, the Epic Adventures. So, I, I for, for me, I guess some of my favorites. I I, I like the, the the design of my troll. I like the design of my Jason. Um, there there are some just over the top goofy designs that that I've done that I think uh, are fun. The Hungry Beast from Terror Vision is absolutely silly and kind of wonderful. Jason is back. But this time, someone is waiting. When, when you come to a franchise where six pictures have come before you, you, you really have to respect all the previous decisions, even if you don't agree with all of them. Uh, that doesn't uh, preclude you from giving it your own nuance. In other words, if I don't like the design of the Jason previously, that doesn't mean I can't alter it to my design, which I think is cooler. But I, I did try to, to remain consistent to the previous films. Every scar, every hole, every crater, every gouge that Jason ever got in the previous films is in my Jason. And I, I made the, uh, you know, one eye higher than the other, and I made him decayed as though he has been, you know, dead for a while and then resurrected again. So I, 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 I tried to remain true to what has come before, but I also gave it my own spin. You know, I, 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 I kind of dug the idea that, you know, he's, he's very emaciated, but like a meat terminator, you know, he just mm -hmm. keeps on coming back. So I got to have fun with like the spinal column and the rib cage sticking out, you know, he's, he's like the ultimate uber zombie, you know, it, it could not be stopped. And then for garbage girl kids, the movie, how'd you go about taking like a, this is like a trading card before? Yeah, I mean, there were trading cards. I mean, the, the, the movie was uh, very challenging, extremely low budget film. And uh, some of the previous concepts that I had in the film, uh, they couldn't really afford. So Are you okay? we ended up uh, using little people with big animatronic pieces on their heads. And, and I, I hoped that it would have been supplemented with appropriate costuming, but nah, not really, they couldn't afford that, so we couldn't even do the body suits that fit them, so they just became what they were. Uh, and, you know, it, the only time they ever talked or moved their faces was when they were in close-up because we didn't have enough money on the show to do animatronics, so everything had to be cabled, and we had to learn how to extend the cables back if you want a really wide shot faces would just be dead. It was a huge compromise, but ultimately it has its own charm. I mean, the movie's so goofy, I don't think anybody cares. Yeah, it has a kind of a to it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, it's your own plan nine.